This episode is brought to you by our great sponsors. BoldGrid works as a suite of plugins designed to help you create WordPress websites faster and easier than ever. BoldGrid will improve your workflow by providing direct access to free themes, page templates, photography, design elements, forms, galleries, and much more right from your dashboard. And the Bold Grid page builder allows you to easily drag and drop and edit this content as you see fit, all without having to use shortcodes. To learn more, head over to buildpodcast.net slash boldgrid. That's buildpodcast.net slash B-O-L-D-G-R-I-D. If you like building things on the internet, especially e-commerce things, check out the Open Jobs with Prosperous. They are a small but friendly bunch that loves building software for entrepreneurs. They're the company behind WooCommerce Subscriptions, a plugin with thousands of users. But that's just the beginning. Prosperous has some new products in the works, and they're looking for talented folks to help them. If you dream of working in your pajamas, sipping macchiatos at your favorite cafe, or while soaking up the sun in Costa Rica, you can make it happen. Prosperous is a distributed company with employees all over the world. They offer some neat benefits like stock options, hardware allowance, and professional development. But the best benefit is the autonomy to do your best work, however you work best. If this sounds like your kind of gig, check out their open positions at buildpodcast.net slash prosperous. That's buildpodcast.net slash P-R-O-S-P-R-E-S-S. And now, on with the show. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of How I Built It, the podcast that asks, how did you build that? Today, I am so excited. My good friend, educator, cigar aficionado, Sean Hesketh is on the show with me today. Sean, how are you? I'm doing great, Joe. Thanks for having me on, man. No problem. Thanks for being on the show. I've, I've got to admit, the reason that I started this podcast was because when I was launching WP in one month, I was like, how does Sean do it on WP 101? And I was like, I just want to ask him, but I don't want to like just be like ask him a million questions. So I started this podcast as a quest to get those questions answered. So I'm very excited to have you on the show. <laughs> That's awesome, man. I love it. Cool. So for those who uh, may not know who you are or what you do, what you're about, why don't you give us a little bit of an introduction to all of that stuff? You bet. Well, my name is Sean Hesketh, and uh, I help beginners learn how to use WordPress to build their own online presence. In 2008, I created a video tutorial series called WordPress 101 that has helped more than a million beginners learn how to use WordPress to build their own website, whether that's a blog or a business site or even a full-blown e-commerce site. So I originally created the site to serve my clients and customers, and uh, over the years, we've continue to reach out to put these videos to work for more and more WordPress developers and agencies throughout the WordPress community. So it's been a, it's been a wild ride the last eight years. Yeah, that's awesome. And you are, I mean, anybody who does client work, I feel, uh, if they're not doing the videos themselves, they're referring people to WP 101, which I would strongly recommend because they're, they're well done there. They're updated and, and all that. And, uh, you know, I don't want to fanboy out too much, but, uh, we'll get, we'll get into all that, but, uh, what was kind of the impetus be behind starting WP 101? Yeah, great question. So before WP 101, I was a freelance designer, 26 years of freelance design. I was designing websites from the mid 90s all the way through 2000s. And uh, in 2006 or seven, I think is when I discovered WordPress. So I began designing and developing WordPress sites for my clients. And that would usually be followed by an in-person kind of one-on-one -on -one training session, teaching them how to use WordPress so they could go back into their site and make changes, update the content on the website. And while the clients loved that training, I kept kind of getting the same feedback, which was, wow, this has been like drinking from a fire hose, you know, just so much information <laughs> to cram into a couple of hours face to face. Right. So they were going, what happens if, you know, a week from now when you're gone, I've forgot what you told me. I forgot how to edit a post, how to make a change in a page. So what do we do then? And so originally I, I went looking to try to find a series of video tutorials. I thought for sure someone has created some screencasts they kind of cover that WordPress basic uh, content. And I can just send my clients to this screencast uh, series whenever I'm done. And so I was kind of surprised actually to find out that 
there was only one other site at the time, believe that or not. I mean, this is kind of crazy to even talk about because eight years ago, so much has changed in the last eight years with regard to online yeah. education. And today there are so many options for learning WordPress and others, right? But back in 2008, there was only one other site that I could find that was, uh, that was halfway decent, but their videos were badly out of date and they really weren't done very well. And so I had a background in audio and video. I thought, hey, I could probably create a series of videos that are better than these. And that became kind of the first driver for WP101, realizing that one of the differentiators would be the need to keep these videos up to date with every release of WordPress, right? So, so to date, we've now updated the videos, I think, a total of 24 times. So with every major release of WordPress, we've updated the videos uh, since 2008. So, Wow. Well, hopefully your job will get a little bit easier and not harder with the new WordPress release schedule, right? It was, they were on three times a year, no matter what. And then they just announced that they're going to change it to just kind of whenever, whenever they feel a major update is needed. Yep. Which is either going to be awesome or is going to be a nightmare. So we'll, we'll just have to see how this pans out. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we'll continue to update the videos anytime there are changes that affect kind of the UI, the user facing elements. So anytime that happens, we'll update the videos. Nice, nice. And so uh, so you're kind of scratching your own itch, which is, I think, if, if I were to rename this podcast today, I think it would be called that, Scratch Your Own Itch. <laughs> but you, ha you had a background in audio and visual. So um, what, kind of, what kind of research did you do to kind of get this off the ground? Yeah, so it was really born out of necessity. Originally, you know, just the need to uh, educate my clients to provide a resource for them after we did this uh, in-person training. And of course, after a short amount of time, I thought, well, I can just skip the in-person thing and we can just send the videos, uh, the clients directly to these videos. But as I started talking to some other friends of mine in the WordPress community, people like Bill Erickson, who's a phenomenal Genesis developer, and really well-known and well-respected, Bill said, hey, man, this is great. I, 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 I want to be able to send my customers to these WordPress tutorial videos because I need the same thing for my clients, but I don't want to be recreating the wheels. So uh, how about you just set it up as a membership site? And I'll send my customers your direction. So that's really where the idea came from. So uh, from that conversation, prior to that, I originally thought that it would just be for my clients only, right? So I mm -hmm. wasn't really setting out to make a, you know, membership site that was going to serve millions of people. I just was looking to serve my clients and to make their lives better. So while I would say it's scratching your own itch, in reality, it's about serving my clients and serving my audience in the best way possible, right? So it really had very little to do with scratching my itch or getting something off my plate as much as it was more about, Hey, here's a, here's a need, you know, here's something that's being requested. And so here's what I can do to kind of solve that need that came from the relationship with my clients and customers. And then that got extended, uh, because of the relationship that I have with others in the WordPress community. So I think that's a, it's kind of a key differentiator, I think, to think about what we create in terms of these products and services not just in terms of how it makes our life better or enables us to have the rock star lifestyle that we want, you know, make money while you sleep and, and right. all those other myths that are, you know, associated with uh, creating an online course like this or a membership site. And I say myth because nothing could be further from the truth, right? Right, right. Um, while you may make money while you sleep, you also get support requests and questions while you sleep. And so I wake up to an inbox every morning filled with WordPress questions. And so there's a lot of myths surrounding all of that. At the end of the day, it's not about that. It's about serving the audience that you're connected to. And so that's what we've done with WP101. That's great. And uh, so so really, uh, not to burst anybody's bubble, but if, if you are setting out to have a four-hour work week by starting your own business, you're probably in for a rude awakening. <laughs> uh, because it is. It is about, I mean, the, the relationships that you forge within your community and with your clients. And, you know, the reason that you know, we know each other is because of the relationships that we forge through going to these conferences together and stuff like that. So that's absolutely right. Cool. So I would love, I would love to talk a bit more about your equipment, right? Because we've had, you know, I've had however many, you know, uh, about 30 or so episodes at this point, uh, live, uh, or on air. And we've talked all, all about the tools that are used for WordPress and themes and things like that. But these kind of these tools that you have, like in the real world, are very interesting to me. And there's so much information and so many different types out there. So how did you go about choosing what equipment you were going to use to record these videos? Great question. And I love geeking out about this stuff. So this is, you just uh, hit a sweet spot for me. <laughs> but with that, let me, let me give this as 
as a caveat before we deep dive into the geek tech, mm -hmm. right? A mentor of mine once said, if it's worth doing, it's worth doing poorly. And I think sometimes people can get hung up on getting the right gear before they begin, right? So I want to kind of just throw that out there. The best way to get started with, you know, podcasting or recording screencasts or whatever is with the tools that you can get right away. So I, I started like everyone else with experimenting with USB mics. So I had a, originally a blue snowball. And then when they came out with, in fact, the mic that's hanging in front of you right now <laughs> is the, uh, the Yeti, uh, which is a phenomenal mic. I used that for a while as well. Uh, those are great, solid USB mics that had really large diaphragms, kind of geek tech for being able to, to make your audio sound as good as possible without those pops when you, the plosives and, and things like that. So I started like everybody else using a USB mic. The beauty of that is it's so easy, right? You just have a microphone, plug right. the cable in your computer, hit record, and you're off and running. Uh, I'm also a big fan of kind of continually iterating, continually improving, and continually learning. And so that's, that's how I've arrived at the gear that I currently have. So this was just about making sure that the quality was better with each recording. And, and as we've done that over the years, I've been able to invest some money into the recording setup that I have today. So today I use a uh, Shure SM7B microphone, which is really a broadcast quality mic. You'll find it in a lot of recording studios. It is not a USB mic. It uses a big chunky microphone cable or an XLR cable out the side. And that means it won't plug directly into my computer. So I have to have an interface, an audio interface uh, between my computer and my microphone. And so for that, I use the Duet by Apogee. Apogee makes some really super clean digital to analog converter. So it takes that signal from the microphone, that XLR cable plugs into that converter. And then from the uh, duet, we can then uh, go into the computer and we can record from there. And then one other piece that I've added in the last year that's made a significant difference. This particular microphone requires a lot of power uh, to really sound its best. And so uh, it does best if you have a preamp. And a preamp is just uh, another inline device, another, another box that you put before the converter. And so I bought the Grace Design M101, which is, again, just a phenomenal clean preamp. It doesn't add any coloring to the microphone, and it just reproduces my voice as it is. So out of the microphone, into the preamp, out of the preamp, into the converter, out of the converter, into GarageBand. Nice, nice. And all of that is to, you know, you go through the effort because from what I understand, it requires kind of less editing and post-production. Is that, is that accurate? That's right. So the, the better quality gear up front, the less editing, less, you know, magic we have to do in editing mm -hmm. to make it sound good. If it sounds pretty decent out of the box, that's less editing and production that I have to do later. Now in GarageBand, I do use a couple of professional quality plugins. One is a limiter which works as a compressor. So it takes the quiet passages when your voice gets kind of quiet, the really loud ones, and it compresses those, making those a little more even so that your audience isn't being jarred if you should raise your voice and they're not straining to hear. So it automatically kind of brings up the lows, the quiet sections, and automatically compresses the highs. And then it does one other really cool thing, and that is every audio file that I export from GarageBand, it makes sure that it goes out at exactly the same level. This is important because if we're recording videos, uh, we're updating our videos with each cycle. And if I only need to update three or four videos, it's important that the audio quality sounds the same and not different than videos that I might have done a few months ago. And so by using some tools like that particular plugin in GarageBand, I'm able to ensure that the audio quality sounds the same every time I record. Gotcha. That's fantastic. That's a lot of great information for anybody who wants to get into the, the home recording setup. And I know we've spent a lot of time on that. And I could talk to you for like an entire show just about <laughs> that. Uh, I am quickly becoming an audiophile thanks to like people like you and Matt Medeiros and Brian Krogsgaard. So I, we can have a whole other show on that. But uh, I do want to talk to you about, you know, you you work from home. I work from home for a company. But a lot of freelancers out there um, at least used to have a harder time kind of connecting, talking to people within their space. And so the the, the idea of a mastermind group has become very popular. Uh, just talking to other people in general, right? Which was another reason for this show. Uh, so who do you who do you talk to? Are you part of a mastermind group uh, to bounce ideas off of people? Absolutely. And I think it's it's critical. Like you said, you know, for those of us that work remotely or work from home, it's important to be able to uh, kind of keep those relationships and conversations 
alive. And if you're not, so in Houston, we don't have necessarily the most robust WordPress community at the moment. And Houston is also such a sprawling city that it's really difficult to connect with other people without driving an hour across town. So I think masterminds are invaluable for getting perspective, being challenged, being held accountable, bouncing ideas off of other people that you're thinking about so that you're not creating things, uh, you know, in a vacuum. So yes, I've been a part of uh, one mastermind group for a little over two years. In fact, the same uh, four guys have met uh, every week, every Monday uh, for two, two years. And, and that's been incredibly valuable. It's helped kind of steer the direction of my product and also these other guys. And then this year, I've actually agreed to participate in a couple of uh, additional masterminds, realizing I have just a little bit more bandwidth, a little more time available. I've decided to invest that in more of those conversations because I think they're incredibly valuable. So the great thing about masterminds is it doesn't take a lot to find these folks, right? You can get into you know, WordPress itself in the Slack channel, it's pretty easy to find people who are doing what you do or do it in a similar way. And one of the things I love the most about the WordPress community is how approachable some of the rock star, we might look at them as rock stars. We might idealize them and hold them up on pedestals. And the reality is these folks are all approachable. They love to be asked questions. They love to talk to you. And uh, while they may or may not be available to join a mastermind with you, it's pretty easy to find people who are. And I think that's an invaluable investment. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, that's any advice I have or, or anytime someone's seeking advice, I should say, just reach out and ask, you know, to, to whoever you uh, are seeking that advice from, because especially in the WordPress community, you know, it's it's a pretty open, it's a pretty open community. So that's, that's fantastic. I And I think, uh, I think I know the members of your mastermind and you are three of four. So I'll need the last, the last guy to complete the set. So watch out for that in season three. Uh, um Cool. So why don't we get to the title question, which is how did you build it? So, and this is specifically the, uh, the website WP 101. Yeah. Good question. So when we first began, we knew we wanted to build a membership site. We knew we wanted to host primarily video tutorials. So with those things in mind, I already had a background in web design, obviously that's what I was delivering for my clients. So we actually started with an off off the shelf framework, uh, the canvas theme by Woo themes back in the day, it was very flexible and, and uh, robust. So we were able to customize that to, uh, kind of display the videos the way that we wanted to, because video tutorials are the most important aspect of our website. I felt it was important that the videos appear at the top of the site, full width, that they were responsive. So that they would change, uh, depending on the, uh, the, the device being used by the viewers. So whether they're viewing it on a tablet or a mobile device, the videos are still full width and still easy to, to view and access. So with those kind of, those kind of drivers for the design, I set about creating the, uh, kind of custom child theme that we used for WP 101 in the beginning, as far as powering the membership side though, that's where things get really interesting because eight years ago, there were really only a couple of options available for creating a membership site. And the most popular was wishlist member and a wishlist member was incredibly robust. It was easy to set up. It took me all of 20 minutes to install and set up the membership site to password protect the video tutorials and make sure that only members had access to view these uh, videos. Uh, they used at the time PayPal exclusively for payments. And so this is one of the things that we kind of outgrew in the next mm -hmm. year or two was we realized we needed to be offering the ability to also accept credit card payments. And a lot of our customers wanted that, didn't have a PayPal account did, or just didn't want to pay via PayPal. And um, so we had talked with the team at Wishlist Member about getting credit card integration via Stripe or something of this nature. And uh, at the time they were working on it, but it, it just wasn't coming fast enough for us. So a couple of years into uh, the process, we actually migrated platforms. We changed from wishlist member to a completely custom, and I highly do not recommend this, this route, <laughs> but a custom integration with a, a subscription payment service called Spreedly. And you've probably never heard of Spreedly. Uh, at the time, there were kind of two players in this subscription payment space, Recurly, which you've probably heard of, and Spreedly, <laughs> which you have not. And so we um, chose poorly. At the time, it seemed both of them were offering, you know, similar roadmaps. Both looked to be a similar product. Uh, we went with Spreedly. We just chose the wrong one. 
And uh, so what happened is that product just stagnated. And over the next couple of years, so now we're about four years, five years in, uh, we just got kind of painted into a corner with our payment system that now we had all these subscriptions, all this payment data in this proprietary third-party system, no way to get that data out. And so looking at migrating a third time to a new platform became a really painful ordeal. And so we, we uh, man, we just wrestled over that for a couple of years before we finally got to make the change that led us to where we are today. So before I dive into where we are today, I can see you have a question. Yeah. So I, I did have a, a follow-up question. I also had an anecdote about choosing wrong because I've always like HD DVD was the thing that I invested heavily in uh, and then Blu-ray totally won. But uh, you mentioned that you, you wanted to make sure your site was responsive, which is which is excellent and relatively new at the time of, you know, when, when you launched or even maybe a little bit after you launched. But uh, do you get a lot of mobile traffic? Yes, we do. And increasingly so. Right. So today uh, I want to say it's on the order of 40 percent of our traffic is from tablets and mobile. So that's significant for us. It's not the majority, obviously, but um, but it's still incredibly significant. So yeah, we have a very, uh, I wouldn't say it's necessarily a mobile first approach, mm-hmm. uh, but that definitely kind of drives the uh, the design of the site. Yeah, definitely. So I mean, anybody, anybody out there, myself included, because it's not something that I had really considered, you know, I figured people want to learn, they're going to sit down in front of their computer and they're going to do the lessons and they're going to work along. But, you know, if you're putting out educational content, People are probably watching it on their phones. Maybe they're on a bus or on a plane or something like that. And, and they want to, you know, they're just kind of filling in time. So uh, that's a, a really, really great point. So, okay. So we are about four years in, five years in at this point. Uh, Spreedly is is becoming a thing of the past. Where do you go from there? <laughs> Where do you go from there? That was the <laughs> question we wrestled with for the yeah. last couple of years. So I worked really closely with my friend, Chris Lemma, kind of explained to him the ordeal that we had, this problem, this challenge of we've got, you know, uh, tens of thousands of members now in the subscription service. If we change and we pull the plug on that, we could lose all of those recurring subscriptions. And that was a huge uh, hurdle for us, right? Because they were all locked into a PayPal IPN. Every subscription Mm -hmm. that's created in PayPal has this IPN associated with it. And uh, that IPN is a little URL that they're looking to ping on your site every time a subscription payment is processed. So when a renewal comes up and they process that payment, it's been successful. They want to send that ping back to our site and let the site know, hey, this person's active again, activate their subscription for another year. And uh, if you've changed platforms in the meantime, then that IPN URL does not exist anymore. And uh, if that happens, in fact, as few as a dozen or so times, PayPal can actually shut down your account. And I heard over the years some nightmare stories of other large uh, membership sites that had that experience. And uh, and it was really difficult for those folks. So we wanted to avoid that. So we really knew that we needed to move strategically in our choice to migrate to a new uh, subscription platform, hopefully one that would serve us for years and uh, and not paint us in a corner again. So I worked with Chris and we looked at membership sites, uh, membership plugins rather, and LMS, learning management system plugins, which are relatively new to the in the WordPress space. LMS systems are obviously not. That was redundant, like ATM machine. I just said <laughs> LMS right. systems, but LMSs <laughs> are relatively new in the WordPress space in terms of integration with WordPress. And there are a few solid choices today. And we were thrilled to have found a Lifter, Lifter LMS. And so a year ago, almost exactly one year ago, in fact, we migrated to Lifter LMS. And it's been amazing. Their team has been stellar. The support we've received over the past year has been incredible. They're very responsive to feature requests, specifically things that we needed to serve our audience. And so I've been phenomenally pleased with Lifter LMS. They support all the payment gateways that we needed. So uh, none of that is an issue. We won't get painted in that corner again. And so I've been thrilled with uh, not only the experience of using Lifter LMS to create courses and lessons, it, it just could not be easier. Uh, in fact, this is one area where they've asked me for feedback. And I said, I really have nothing to offer you in this regard because you've done a phenomenal job of streamlining the process of creating courses and lessons, which is the meat of what we do. And so their UI is just spot on. Uh, what we did do is a, is uh, some custom page templates in the time in between somewhere midway through our adventures with Spreedly, we actually uh, did change the theme. So we migrated to a Genesis 
uh, the Genesis framework and a child theme. And that has been so much more robust and so much easier to, to customize. Uh, so we're continuing to use Genesis. We were able to almost seamlessly plug in Lifter LMS and continue using our same theme. So that way it didn't affect our members. Uh, they didn't have a learning curve to learn how to use our new system. And I feel like that was really important in the migration. That's fantastic. And it sounds like, so I think the the big difference between your site at, at currently and my site is, um, you know, I'm learning, I'm using LearnDash, which I absolutely love, but I'm using LearnDash with like, I'm using it with uh, WooCommerce and like a few other things. And I'm going to roll out memberships if I haven't already by the time this is airing. And, and I'm using like Skyverge and Prospress for that uh, at Chris's recommendation, of course. So I'm plugging in a lot of things into this site, but it sounds like Lifter LMS kind of does all of that. This is one of the things that I really was drawn to with Lifter LMS. The fact that so many of those features, critical features when you're running an online service, right? You want to be able to have a, a Q&A forums where your members can ask questions and interact with each other. You want to be able to send out targeted emails at timely points during the course. Uh, you want to be able to award badges and certificates. These are all important elements of of a modern online course. And a lot of other plugins rely on either add-ons or third-party integrations. And, and that's where I really got nervous because I, I don't want, I wanted as few moving pieces as mm -hmm. possible because then every time one of those pieces updates, then you've got right. the risk of something breaking on your site functionality. And so I want to spend my time answering WordPress questions and creating new content for my members not constantly troubleshooting broken pieces on my site. So I love Lifter LMS. They're kind of all in one approach. It's all included. I don't have to use a third-party email service to send out targeted uh, emails at timely points in the course. And that's one of my, my, one of the features I love the most and has probably made the most significant difference since migrating has been what they call engagements. And this, these emails that I can trigger based on uh, student actions throughout the course. Obviously, there's when they start the course, you can send out a welcome email. When they finish the course, you can send a congratulatory email. But more importantly, if I'm covering a particularly complicated topic, then I can actually send out an email when a student finishes that lesson. I can send out an email that just says, hey, that was a really tough topic. Congrats getting through that. Do you have any questions? And kind of start this dialogue via email. That's been incredibly valuable. It's helping to kind of put the human touch back into online learning. And I think that's something that's missing from a lot of online learning experiences, right? People sign up, you go through a course, and then they leave. And there's very little, if any, interaction. There aren't questions being asked. And, and, and I find that folks are less likely to jump into the forum and ask a question for the same reason nobody wants to raise their hand in a classroom and ask yeah. a question, right? You don't want to be viewed as the dumb one in the room answering, asking the dumb <laughs> question. And of course, there are none. They're all phenomenal questions. And most times I'm encouraging my students to repost their question in the forum. This is a great question. And I'd love to answer this. And by ans answering it in the forum, then we have the opportunity there for, uh, for the answer to benefit other people. So I know I'm kind of deep diving into this thing, but, but that's one of the biggest reasons why I loved uh, the Lifter LMS approach, the fact that it's kind of all in one and they brought all that into uh, their plugin without having to rely on a bunch of third-party services. That's fantastic. And I, that, that advice about engagement is, is uh, really spot on. I mean, I, you gave it to me a while back and I've started to integrate it more, you know, it because you want the online learning environment to feel more like a classroom. You don't want students to feel like they're siloed off from everybody else. So exactly. That's great. Uh, we are, well, we're probably definitely going to go over, but that's okay. I'm having a lot of fun. I hope the listeners are too. So we've we've uh, basically got the history of the site, right? We've talked about the, the transformations quite a bit. So we can kind of bypass that question, which is usually on the list, and we can go right to what are your plans for the future? Yeah, great question. So this year is really exciting for us because we're growing in a couple of different directions. One, uh, we will continue to add new courses. We're just about to launch our brand new course on Jetpack. So it'll cover all the modules, the 35, 37 different modules in Jetpack. We partnered with Zach Gordon, who's a phenomenal WordPress educator. Uh, he's created that course for us, and we'll be launching that probably within the week. So really excited to get that course up and running for our members in the coming year, you're going to see us adding new courses, not, not always product specific. So up until 
up until now, what you've seen is our WordPress 101 tutorials, which obviously teaches people how to use WordPress, the dashboard, the functions and features of WordPress. We have similar tutorials for Yoast SEO, WooCommerce, which is a very robust series uh, created by Daniel Espinoza, a phenomenal WooCommerce expert, the Jetpack series. But we're also going to be shifting gears to talk more about how to. So in the in the coming year, some of our courses are going to be focused on how to accomplish specific outcomes, not just these tools. And uh, so we've been focused on product centric or tool centric tutorials, and we're trying to be a little more broad and, and more helpful to our to our uh, audience, to these students who have specific objectives, a specific outcome in mind, and we want to meet them where they are. So that's one way we're going to grow is through the addition of new courses. The other is that we've begun translating our videos into other languages. So all of our videos are already closed captioned, and we feel that that's really important to make them available to the largest audience possible. But we've also begun the process of subtitling, translating those closed captions into subtitles in other languages. So the WordPress 101 videos are now available in Spanish as well uh, via those subtitles. And so we'll continue doing that throughout the year and uh, adding additional languages as we're able. So those are a couple of big ways that we're going to be growing in the in the 2017 I'm pretty excited about. That's awesome. Well, we're really looking forward to that. Uh, by the time this show comes out, the Jetpack course will certainly be out, I, I'm guessing. So go and check that out. I'll link it in the show notes. My favorite question to ask, and I know you're full of them because I've gotten a bunch of them from you already. Do you have any trade secrets? <laughs> trade secrets. I thought you just, they said build it and they will come, right? That's <laughs> the field yeah. of dreams approach. It, absolutely. Yeah. The field of dreams yeah. approach. And then you realize that nothing could be further from the truth, right? There are some things that you have to actually uh, do to stand out and differentiate yourself from the noise that is out there today. So trade secrets, most of my trade secrets, these are not groundbreaking. They're just things that that my audience continues to tell me uh, were significant differentiators for them. And so just, just a couple, and I'll just summarize them this way. Number one, quality matters. Number two, people matter. And then I've got a bonus one here I'm going to get into. But the first one about quality matters. First of all, I mentioned earlier in the show that, you know, a mentor of mine said, if it's worth doing, it's worth doing poorly. Don't get hung up on perfection before you hit the publish button was kind of the gist of that. He wasn't saying Mm -hmm. crank out poor content or do it badly. Rather, it should constantly be an iteration. So don't let perfection keep you from getting started. That said... The flip side of that coin is that it's very important to invest in quality. One of the reasons why WP 101 has enjoyed the success it has over the years and why we've partnered with large companies like GoDaddy, for example, who have licensed our videos and make those videos available to their customers is because of the quality of these WordPress 101 videos. That's because I obsess over the things we talked about earlier, not just the gear, but making sure that the Every video is carefully scripted, that the, the voiceover is delivered in a conversational way that's easy to understand and is crystal clear for a learner, and that the, screen, the on-screen actions are easy to follow by making the cursor a little bit larger, making sure we're using a plugin like Smooth Scroll that makes those actions on screen just you know easy to follow for the viewer. All of those details add up to an experience, a learning experience via video that people aren't used to seeing because... They're used to finding videos on YouTube that are homemade and filled with us and ums and are usually done in one take, as opposed to our process where we script it, we record a voiceover, then we record on-screen actions to match the voiceover, and then we export this high-quality video. So invest in quality because those details matter, and they are, in fact, one of the things that can differentiate you from everyone else, whether you're starting a podcast and paying attention to audio quality can be very important as you're, as you're experiencing right now. Uh, those details matter. And then the second thing I say, people matter. This almost, it should go without saying. Sadly, it doesn't because what happens is we end up focusing on our product instead of the people we're serving. So we talked earlier about scratching your own itch. This is another of my big trade secrets. I believe that WordPress 101 is nothing more than a vehicle that enables me to serve people. And so I'm constantly thinking of the people that I'm serving first. I'm not creating my product for the purpose of, 
you know, generating tons of revenue so we could flip this thing in a few years or get some venture capital funding. I don't think product first, I'm thinking people first. And I believe as you focus on serving your audience, building your audience, that over time, the product will mature of necessity. It will mature and grow, but you'll grow in a way that's connected to the success of your audience, not find yourself scratching your head, wondering why you built it and no one's here. So I'm constantly looking for ways to put the human touch back into every experience. I think one of the biggest mistakes we see young WordPress companies make today is that when they start talking about scale, as soon as they've got a certain number of customers, a thousand or so, they want to talk about hiring a, a, you know, a virtual assistant to start handling support tickets because that's almost seen as a, as a sign of maturity, right? Well, we're becoming legit because I just hired a VA to, you know, start offloading these pesky support tickets. And I still answer every one of our support tickets and I still answer the majority of the questions in our Q&A forum because I believe that's the whole point. And at 50 something thousand members on our site, uh, we're still able to, I'm still able to do that, believe it or not, without sacrificing my four hour work week. So, <laughs> <laughs> but I can still do that. And, and you're, you would be surprised how far you can go. So I would say go as far as you can with those things that enable you to constantly have a, a tight feedback loop with the audience you're serving. So people matter, put the people first, then you create solutions that answer those questions. So that's my, those are my trade secrets, invest in quality and people matter. Excellent. Excellent. And uh, you said you might have a bonus for us. I don't want to put you on the spot, but I'm very curious. Related, uh, related to that, I picked up this line a couple of days ago. Somebody said, very simply, stop selling your product and instead focus on the outcome that you create for your customers. And it really resonated with me because that's what we've done with WordPress 101. So I'm less interested in whether or not you learned how to use WordPress because to be honest, no one, well, very few people, some people actually do just get off on learning new technologies and that's perfectly mm -hmm. fine. It's perfectly legit. Some of us in the, right, in the room right. <laughs> and some of your listeners are these people, yeah. but for the most part, people don't seek out to learn new tools. They seek to create an outcome. They have a, right. an end in mind, a goal. They want to build a website. They want to be able to share some recipes with their family and friends. They want to build an online site to sell t-shirts. They have a goal in mind. And then these are the tools that they need to accomplish that goal. So if we started changing the language on our site from, you know, I'm a web designer to I help create digital leads for your business. That's outcome focused, right? right? right. Instead of, you know, I'm, I'm a, I'm a developer. I'm a WordPress developer. Nobody cares if you're a WordPress developer, what they right. care about are the outcomes that you create. I create business sites that convert or that load fast. Oh, well, how do you do that? So if we started focusing more on the language on our websites, the way we communicate to people about what we do, and this is just universal. First of all, it goes back to people matter. It helps us to connect with our audience in a deeper way, a more meaningful way, because now I'm connecting with you and your needs. And so we're outcome focused, not focusing on your product. So a little bit of a change in focus, but uh, I'm kind of seeing that everywhere. And I think if we begin to think in that way, it'll help us all to be more effective in what we do. That's awesome. It's uh, it, it reminds me a little bit of the book Start with Why, right? You're changing the what do you do to why do you do it? And we know it is. So that's very cool. I will link that book in the show notes too because it uh, it has changed the way I think. So well, we are over time, but it was a great, great conversation, Sean. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks for letting me go over, Joe. This has been a blast. Hey, everybody. Do you want to get out there and build something with WordPress? In my new course, How to Build WordPress Themes, A Web Designer's Guide, I teach you just that. In the course, we'll learn how to take a static HTML site and convert it into a fully functional WordPress theme and plugin. We'll start with a little bit about PHP and how it works, we'll explore some great tools like underscores, and then we'll take a static site and convert it to a WordPress theme. You'll become familiar with underscores, you'll learn how to customize blog posts, pages, header and footer areas, and create custom menus and widgets, you'll build a plugin, and you'll even learn how CMB2, a popular WordPress tool for adding custom information, works. And for a limited time, How I Built It listeners can get 20% off. Just go to buildpodcast.net slash udemy. That's buildpodcast.net slash u-d-e-m-y. Thanks so much for listening, and thanks to our great guest and fantastic sponsors. If you liked the show, please rate it and subscribe on iTunes, in Google Play, or whatever your podcast app of choice is. If you have any questions, 
Be sure to reach out at howibuilt.it. And finally, until next week, get out there and build something. Mm-hmm.